Welcome back to the neighborhood, boys and girls. Our next guest is fellow Harvest member, Matt Ron. Matt, welcome to the neighborhood. Nice to be with you, Jim. Nice, nice to have you. So uh, Matt does a bunch of different stuff under one umbrella, Ron Companies, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, your main stuff is concrete. Uh, so that's one of our divisions. Yeah. All right. So the wrong company is made up of two divisions. We have a landscape company, and then we have a construction company. We do concrete and excavating. Okay. What was first? I started with the concrete and then excavating. Okay. Now, did you work for somebody else and do that, or you just were like, hey, look, I want to open up my own business. I'm going to do this. <laughs> no. So it's funny. When I was younger, my neighbor had his own construction business when I was like in kindergarten, five years old, and he'd bring the equipment home at night, and we'd naturally want to go over there, and he'd ride us around the backyard. So I had this little paper my mom had that said, when I get older, I want to own my own construction company. Yeah. So I, he moved away when I turned like seven, and then... I never knew anybody had a construction company, so I got into high school, you know, you get lost, I didn't know what I was going to do, graduated high school, my friend's dad was like, you need a job? I was like, yeah, I just need a job, I don't know what I'm going to do. He's like, well, I could use a construction laborer, be here tomorrow at 6 a.m. I was like, all right. Nice. I thought we were going to be like framing houses. He takes me out in this field with this big excavator, and I start digging this ditch, and they're like, climb down in the ditch and put these pipes together. I'm like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> so it was a little bit of a rough start, but... um. I you're in the ditch. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's the kind of guy he was. He just yelled at you all day. Right. Like, you're supposed to know what was going on. Right. And I had right. no clue. But I just rolled with it for a while, and I, I liked it. I started to learn. He was, even though he was, like, one of them rough, hard people, he was a good teacher, and, like, I learned a lot from him. So he taught me how to read the blueprints and understand different technical things. And eventually I had a motorcycle accident, and they put me in the office on, on light duty because I broke both my legs. Okay. And uh, that was an event, obviously, break both your legs. Sure, sure. <laughs> so they put me in the office, and they're like, you're just going to do light duty stuff till like, you get better, and you can go back in the field. I'm like ADD, I can't sit still. So I started just looking for stuff to do in the office, and I'd start like talking to people and learning about what they did. So I started teaching myself how to estimate and read the blueprints. And okay. From there, it kind of snowballed. I was a project manager. I worked with a couple other people, helped one guy kind of really grow his business, and then eventually one day I'm like, I think I need to do this on my own and just give it a shot. So I just went for it with me in a pickup truck, and I didn't really have any idea what I was and doing. what year was that? That was about eight years ago now. Okay, yeah. okay. So you had like a tragedy of getting in an accident and breaking both your legs. And really, probably looking back on that, you wouldn't be where you're at today unless that happened. You know, 100%. You know? yeah. yeah, I think about that a lot. I like reflect on those moments in yeah. your life. Yeah, yeah. I know you're big on that too. A sure. lot of people don't realize that or whatever. They want to be poor me, right? But if you can see past that mm -hmm. and realize like it's putting you in a trajectory to be somewhere else in your life. Yeah. So we met through the Harvest Group. Yeah. Um, and the Harvest Group is like a high performance network of people and not normally your kind of line of work. You know what I mean? Like most people that are in there are like blue collar or white collar as opposed to blue collar. So how did you find that network and how did that all happen where you get into the personal development coaching type realm? Yeah, um, I don't really know. I guess maybe on accident or it was meant to be. I had connected with Devin a couple of years ago at the Burlington County Chamber of Commerce. Okay. I guess because he was young and I was always young and I didn't really, even once I got my business going to like a pretty good level, I will admit, like, I didn't know very much about business, and there was nobody I knew in my family or friends that really ran a business. Okay. So I had to figure everything out as I went. Uh, and even to this day, I'm still trying to figure things out. You sure. Know? So I would gravitate to certain people and meet people and try and just learn about what they're doing. And so I had met Devin and just stayed in touch with him. And when he told me about the harvest, I said, that sounds interesting. Let me jump in and see what it's about. Right. And now you're... You're deep in it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're not like just a fringe guy. You're in involved in it, doing a bunch of stuff. What else do you do for personal development? All, all the different things, you know, whether it's podcasts, whether it's seventy five hard, all those different things. What do you do on a regular basis for that? Yeah, so I've done seventy five hard a few times. I really 
and working more to make it more of a lifestyle like I know you have and like some days that that's definitely an inspiration so I appreciate you sharing your story that way um, but there's numerous things definitely podcasts definitely reading right one thing I think you learn from 75 hard and there's even a couple other people that have a similar thing now just read 10 pages a day like sure. 10 pages a day can definitely change your life right yeah. but it's the consistency and I think that's been a big thing that I've learned too is no matter what it is consistency right like you can do it once a month and go all out and then be like, why am I not getting anywhere? Right, right, right. Or you right. can do a little bit every single day in the days when you don't feel like you're doing it, you just do that little bit and then you're going to put yourself that much farther ahead in the long run. Now, are you someone who responds to, I mean, I guess, yeah, because you said that the guy that you worked for was kind of a hard ass <laughs> and then you kind of got, are you someone who responds to the Andy Frisilla barking at you kind of thing or are you more of the... Peace, love, and happiness. Let me meditate and hear some tranquil music in the background kind of thing. No, I'm definitely the Andy Frisilla type of thing. And a lot of people, uh, when they meet me, like, I'm very reserved, shy, quiet, whatever you want to mm-hmm. call it. But then, like, when I'm in my zone and I'm doing things, I, I can tend to be the opposite yeah. sometimes. And that's another thing that I've been working on and trying to learn, you know, the whole emotional intelligence and trying to regulate where I'm at mm-hmm. when things go wrong. But, yeah, inside I'm like a ball of fire. I'm very intense but my personality is I'm very quiet so a lot of people don't see that into like, the outward comes mat. out one day right yeah the outward <laughs> mat isn't really like the inward right mat is, you know and then I mean? when it comes out they're like whoa what's wrong with him <laughs> <laughs> how have you transitioned from being a laborer a worker a hard working person to a business person, an entrepreneur, a leader. How has that gone and, and and how do you maintain that type of, of role change? I think every day is a little bit of a struggle. I'm still trying to learn it. Like I said, I've never really been a business person per se. I'm, I'm kind of teaching myself as I go here and I have a good circle of people. I think that's important. Right. Um, but you have to be willing to learn, or I know we talk a lot about people that are willing to be coachable, right? Sure, sure. So if you're going to show up every day and give it the best, and much like I did when I was on light duty, like pay attention to what's going on for you, look for opportunities to teach yourself new skills, then you're naturally going to progress and get better. Right? Right. Opportunities are out there. Everybody's capable of great things. It's just how you apply yourself and what positions you put yourself in. Yeah, and you really you really stretch your boundaries. You know what I mean? Like you do the concrete and you do the landscape, but you also do, you know, new construction and buildings and you're in Florida looking at rental properties and you're really looking at all different facets of not just business, but wealth building, building a life for your family, for your kids and and building a little Matt Ron empire kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like how do you... How do you not uh, let fear run you when it comes to a totally new challenge? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like real estate and rental properties this is a completely different thing than concrete. How do you not fall victim to the voice in your head that says you can't do this, you can't, you can't go, you can't stretch that far? <laughs> I don't know, because if you could, like, here inside, I probably doubt myself a lot on a <laughs> daily basis, but that's another thing, like, Ray, I just don't show it, and I think I've committed to myself that when I see other people doing it, I'm like, if they're doing it, then I can do it, I just need to figure out how they're doing it, so then I just start to look for people that are in those areas, so with the rental properties and things, I, I started watching people do that, and I'm like, oh man, I need to do it, it's so hard, it's impossible, but then you do one and then you start asking a couple questions and you find somebody I know I've even asked you about some of the things you've done with flipping properties and things like everybody has a story and can be a resource Mm -hmm. it's up to you on how you can take that information and put it into action I think okay now a little a little deep question is there anything that you haven't done yet that you've thought about and it's kind of like your next I'm gonna prove it to myself that I can do this one of those things you're like, man, I don't know if I can mess around with that. Like, maybe Chippendale dance or something <laughs> like that. You know what I mean? Something that you're like, oh, I'm not really sure if I can pull that one off, you know? Yeah, I don't know. Um, business-wise, it would probably be um, 
get in an apartment building. I really want to get an apartment building. I've been looking into that for like, a while. Like big multi yeah. unit. Like okay. I like it. Twenty units or more. You okay. Know what I mean like I all like in on it. So I'm looking at that. I'm looking at um developing a warehouse space right now, a couple of warehouses that I would then lease out over seven years. So okay. that's a big investment too. A couple of big projects. Sure, there. sure. So I'm weighing those out. And then personally I think um I really would like to like commit to 75 hard to a, for a whole year. Okay. I've done it for 75 days multiple times and then I drop off and then I hit do a little bit for a while and drop off. So I think this year I really told myself like I need to really commit to doing this and force myself to do it throughout the whole year because okay. like you said, I, I do a lot of things. I bounce around a lot and I feel like I need to really get some of that focus in my life. Okay. <laughs> now, last question personal question what's one thing about you that people don't know that would kind of surprise them you know what i mean like oh, maybe like you really like madonna <laughs> you know something like that like what's one thing where you're like yeah hey, well you know oh one thing i don't know maybe I've... like a, a a tv show that you really really like that you kind of you kind of hide from people that you really like it or something like that. A guilty pleasure kind of thing. Or yeah. Anything like that. Or, or even like something, you know, like I know it already. I know you're a, you're a more spiritual person than you let on okay. to be. You know what I mean? So yeah. that would be one thing that I would think of. Or even like a music thing if you love Beethoven or something <laughs> like that. You know, something that, that you don't portray in the outward Matt Ron image. Yeah, I guess before with music, somebody asked me before about uh, what my favorite music was, and I said Frank Sinatra because growing up, my dad would always listen to it on Sundays. It has Sunday was yeah, Sinatra, Sundays was Sunday. Always be playing through our house. I would day, not so. have guessed that for <laughs> sure. For and sure. then, like I said, people just never guess that. Like inside, I have a lot of energy. I like connecting with people, helping people. I go back to my high school now, and they have a career counseling where I try and talk to kids about entrepreneurship. Okay. So I'm very quiet, and people think, like, I'm shy, or some people be like, oh, he's a dick because he don't talk to nobody. Right, right, right. But that's just... I'm just quiet on the outside, but on the inside, I really have a passion for helping people, and I think my story, like, I feel like now I owe it to show other people because... I never thought I would be where I'm at, and I feel like I didn't have anybody around me, really. Mm -hmm. I kind of figured it out as I went, and it's the same thing I said earlier. Like, I see other people doing it. They do it. I can do it. I feel the same way, but I really, if I'm doing it, you could be doing it, too. Sure, sure. Let me show you the way. So yeah. I feel like that's one thing maybe people don't realize, but I definitely love to help people out, and if people need help and reach out to me. I try and help them however I can. Awesome, man. Matt, thank you so thank much you, for Jim. coming by. We'll be right back with the next guest on the Samoridges Neighborhood.